Hey, everybody. It's your pal, Ken. And Jeff Seals. Hey. We're here to tell you about the new recreational drone pilot rules from the F.A. Frickin' A. <laughs> Jeff, I've been getting a lot of emails from people about this. What is going on? People are flipping their lids. Well, the FAA issued their interim safety guidance. This is to reinforce the recent changes that they made for recreational flyers or hobbyists. Um, and to simplify things, they brought out eight conditions that hobbyists need to comply with as part of these new rules. We're going to go through these one by one, but basically what they're saying to hobbyists is, don't be stupid. <laughs> don't well, be just an idiot. Actually, as a hobbyist pilot myself, uh, I, I like these rules. I don't think that this is too far out of, out of sorts for what the, we expect from hobbyists flying drones. And it'll only increase from here. <laughs> they're not good, they never take away rules. They're, they're only <laughs> going to add rules. So let, let's go through some of these. Guideline number one, fly strictly for recreational purposes. And uh, you are considered a recreational flyer if you fly your drone for fun. This is important. If you fly part 107, you cannot have fun. Otherwise, you're an instant hobbyist. That's not true at all. Uh, it, it's important to know when and where you can fly and how to register your drone. You can go to the FAA's drone zone. There's a link in the description. For recreational pilots, uh, you know, this just reiterates the fact that we're not part 107 pilots. So it's not too much difference. Right. And this is something that I've said in previous videos. There's five words that the FAA takes very seriously. And those five words are? Ken Heron has great hair. <laughs> While that is true, that's not the five words. The five words are in furtherance of a business, which means if you're a hobbyist flying for fun and you post your fun video on a monetized YouTube channel, you are instantly in violation, according to... FAA guidelines. This is true. It's unfortunate. And it's a head scratcher, too, because so many people do it and it's unenforceable. <laughs> I'm sure that they will figure out a way to enforce it at some point. A lot of this stuff is common sense, like follow the safety guidelines of a community based organization, such as the AMA, the Academy of Model Aeronautics. The more information, the better. Right, Jeff? Yes, sir. And of course, I mean, go to the AMA website and read the rules if you don't, if you're not already aware of them. And there's all kinds of links in the description of this video for your reference. So the, the third one that is on the list is the line of sight. You, you have to have line of sight of your drone, or you need to have a visual observer assisting you to keep line of sight of that drone when you fly. Again, this is not a deviation from what we've had in the past. Right. I'd say the more eyes on your bird, the better, right? Absolutely. I went everybody's heard about the bird. Bird, bird, bird. Bird's a winner when a bird, bird, bird. And we're back, and I have to apologize to Jeff. I, I am sorry. I could not resist, sir. <laughs> On to number four. You have to operate in a manner that does not interfere with and gives way to any manned aircraft. Duh. If you don't know this, then uh, you, really, you really shouldn't be anywhere near a drone. <laughs> yeah, agreed. And again, it's what we've had before. This includes flying near emergency services or any officer doing their official duty you don't want to interfere with that number five is the one that has i guess the most dramatic changes to what we have seen in the past and this is in regards to flying in controlled airspace the faa has allotted that hobbyists can fly in provided specific recreational areas that are designated fixed sites by the ama for the interim the idea is, is that they're going to upgrade the Lance system to allow recreational pilots to request permission to fly in recreational areas, but this is not in place yet. So as a caveat, instead of just telling you, no, you can't fly there until we get this fixed, they're letting you fly in those recreational fixed sites as, uh, as an, an addendum until we get the Lance system in place for them. Uh, do not call the airports anymore for authorization don't do that you're just interfering with what they need to be doing to keep us safe in the skies and uh, i'll put a link to not only the list of approved fun flying sites uh but uh an air map link and a link to the laa and c page of the faa all right the sixth guideline is to fly your drone at or below 400 feet 
when in uncontrolled or Class G airspace. If you don't know what Class G airspace is, then I have a link in the description to where you can see sectional charts. This is a sectional chart of the entire United States. It's a busy, busy place. And I'll zoom in here as we go closer and closer into Washington, D.C., and it starts to give you more detail. And all the colored lines and swirlies and dip de doos and flip de dees there, these are important things that you need to know if you're going to be flying in the United States airspace. Sectional charts like these are the one thing that really tripped me up when I was learning. And I actually failed my first Part 107 test. And then I discovered remotepilot101.com, saw the videos, and passed with uh, uh, almost 100%. Now, since the last time I took the test, Jeff, I'm, I've probably forgotten about 30% of it because it's not something that I use every day. I do use it uh, when, when I go on jobs. I will check sectional charts. And this is important for Part 107 pilots. But you also should have a working knowledge, at least a working knowledge, if you're a hobbyist. And this is something, unfortunately, that uh, not everybody is going to have, uh, ever. I don't think that will ever happen. No, and it's it's challenging. I mean, I've read sectional charts, such sex... <laughs> I am not editing that out. I, I, <laughs> I'll edit that out, but but not the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I was familiar with sectional charts uh, already before this came about because you know I had been using the the flight simulators for years, and we used the sectional chart, sectional charts for that. So it didn't. I didn't have a problem with those. Uh, but most people that don't have access to them and haven't seen one before, I think the first time they see one, it's just going to be very intimidating. It is very intimidating. So I, I urge you, if you're going to be a, a drone pilot, and by drone pilot, I mean if you have a drone and you pilot it, then you're a drone pilot. And and I, I have to uh, skip ahead here to the eligibility to become a drone pilot. You have to be 16 years old. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I want to encourage kids. I've had kids under 16 on my channel. Here's a picture of one flying a drone right now. She was a big fan. I'm, I'm sure she's 16 by now, but back when we took this video, she was uh, like probably 12 or 13. So I, I don't want to discourage children from becoming drone pilots, even as a hobbyist, but they just can't. Yeah, I prefer to see a caveat where if you were a certain age that it required to have like an adult present or, or another uh, authorized pilot, for instance. But um, setting the bar at 16 is similar to what we're seeing in like Canada and other countries. So it's not too far out of what is trying to be standardized globally. You know, when you're, when you're a PIC pilot in control, you can hand the controls off to someone as long as you're still there. And I don't, I don't think there's an age restriction on that. Is yeah, there? I'm not aware of one, no. If you're a kid watching this, don't be discouraged. There's, there's, a way, there's still ways for you to fly drones. And uh, does this apply to drones under? Yeah, the, the weight is 0.55 to 55 pounds. So if they have a drone that is smaller or under that 0.55 uh, rating, that they can use to fly, which, you know, obviously we do have one of those because the Tello is okay. below that. And this is a drone that we've seen schools and everything else use that people can learn with. So there are options out there for, for kids or younger people to be able to fly drones. Just to be clear, one of the reasons why you have to be at least 16, in the United States anyway, is because I think that's the minimum age to get insurance. I know it's the minimum age to be able to sign documents uh, it yeah. should, should be 18 for document signing. Well, and the other reason for this age limit for 16 is, if I'm not mistaken, in the United States, that's the earliest time that you can get a state-issued ID of some sort. Ah, okay. So that may also be part of that. That makes sense. And number seven of the guidelines is pass an aeronautical knowledge and safety test. This is a huge gray area. Yeah, they haven't identified what this test is going to be, how we're going to take it, um, whether there's a cost associated to it, anything. It's just basically the knowledge and safety test. 
we've seen Canada's introduction of this, and it had sectional charts, it had uh, aeronautical questions and, and things that pilots should know in the test. It was a fairly strict test, so it would rule out uh, you know, people that aren't interested in learning and number eight is register and externally mark your drone. Now, before you could put your registration number inside like the battery compartment, but now yeah. they want it to be visible on the outside. And the reason for that is terrorism, uh, hmm. essentially, because if a drone lands, say, on the White House lawn, they want to be able to look to, to without taking anything apart and activating said bomb or whatever this is the reason this is actually the reason uh, yeah uh, they want to be able to, to to send like the robot up with the camera and go Gee! oh there's uh, the registration number we we know that uh, uh billy johnson of uh park place idaho sent this bomb or whatever i know you know there's a terrorist is not going to put the registration number on a drone but anyway <laughs> And this has already been in place because, uh, you know, we've already had this, uh, I guess, implemented before. I've already gone and marked all of my drones oh, and yeah. have put these stickers on here that uh, I actually got from a site called Tag My Drone. And I'll add a number nine guideline to just reinforce. Don't be a dumb dumb. <laughs> if you have the brilliant idea, hey, I'm going to fly over uh, the baseball game or the World Series or the White House or whatever. Before you have a bad idea, always Google that idea to see if it's bad. <laughs> right? Yeah, common <laughs> sense is the most important thing when it comes to flying these drones because, you know, you have to remember they do weigh a lot. Uh, you can injure people with them if you're not careful. And so just, you know, take into consideration where you fly and what you do. Uh, you have a responsibility to that. We can say that till we're blue in the face, though. But when you buy a drone at Walmart, the cashier's not going to be like, ah, a drone. Do you have common sense? Ah. <laughs> you know, they're not going to do that. I mean, like, do you have uh, uh, 57 bucks? Okay, good to go. But anyway, so there, there are the guidelines. Nothing really to, to fret about. I mean, it is the government, you know, that's their government. But uh, and, and like I said before, they're only going to get this. This is going to get thicker. You know, there's going to be more rules. In 10 years, it'll be a novel. I like the idea of the test, and I like the idea of being able to eventually start using Lance as a hobbyist. I really think that those will be major boosts to us to get drones in more prominent areas where we can get better footage of things. And the hobbyists that are very creative but are not Part 107 certified, this is going to help them. It's awesome. going to be a good thing. And we will always help you. So check back to the channel often. If you're not subscribed, I urge you to do so. Uh, subscribe to Jeff's channel as well. There's a link in the description. Thank you so much, Jeff. You're welcome, sir. Until next time, buh and bye. Well, Jeff, that was fun. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. It's, just, it's a perfect excuse for me to take my drones out of boxes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that whole bird thing. That was... That was not called for. I, I really uh, I apologize for that. Uh, <laughs>